Hi, welcome back to Chemistry 1710 or General Chemistry 1 videos. We're going to talk about root mean square velocity today. And so in terms of root mean square velocity, what does that mean? Well, here's the interesting part. Let me finish writing up root mean square velocity. Sometimes this is called RMS velocity. That is uh, just an abbreviation for root mean square, okay? Um, what this basically does is it reiterates this idea that we've been talking about that lighter particles, lighter particles travel faster in the gaseous phase than heavier particles do. And this is particularly interesting. The reason why this is particularly interesting is because we have to remember that no matter what gaseous particles we're talking about, the average kinetic energy of all particles, all gaseous particles, is exactly the same, right? So the average kinetic energy of all gaseous particles at the same temperature, oh, this is kind of a squeaky pen, woohoo, is the same. And that's because we know that kinetic energy is equal to um, one half mv squared, or we're gonna call this u here, or mu really, more appropriately. And the reason why it's called mu is because mu is actually this average velocity. Okay, so the root, it's actually analogous to the root mean square velocity. And I'm going a little bit too far down. Sorry about that. Square speed. We'll call it, let me just put RMS speed here. Woo. Okay, so when we talk about this, you're keeping in your mind at all times that we know that kinetic, average kinetic energy is the same but that lighter particles travel faster. This is the main point that we were trying to get to. Lighter particles travel faster than heavier particles do. All right, having said that, there is definitely a, an algebraic equation. And since this is chemistry, there's always some kind of math that goes along with it. And so let's have a moment and erase and see what we can do in terms of what this equation looks like. Right? So, what does this equation look like? And I'm going to erase some and erase more as I go along. All right, so what does this look like? The root mean square velocity equation is mu equals the square root of 3RT over the molar mass. All right, what's interesting about this is that we know that mu is the root mean square velocity. We know that R is the ideal gas constant, but it's a different ideal gas constant than what we've dealt with in the past, right? So while mu is the RMS velocity, we would expect this to be a larger number if you have a lighter particle. The thing that's interesting here is that R is not 0 0.0821 or 0 0.0 8206, which is what we used in the rest of the gas chapter as our R. This one is 8.314 joules per mole K. And what's interesting about that is that joules is actually a derived unit. And because it's a derived unit, we're actually going to need to take this, the derived version of joules, and plug it in here. 
Now, what is the deri der derivation, I guess I should say, of joules? Let's have a moment here and remember that. Okay, so the derivation of joules is that in one joule, there is one kilogram meter squared per second squared, which should make some sense, guys, because meter squared per second squared, you might have been asking yourself with R, and considering that, by the way, when we talk about R, the rest of this is T, this is temperature in Kelvin, right? And mm is exactly what we think it is. It's molar mass in kilograms per mole. Okay, one of the things that you would have asked yourself is you could have said in the midst of the R unit, well, okay, R is joules per mole K, Kelvin is gonna cancel out, moles are gonna cancel out with the lovely um, molar mass and temperature here. But the problem is, is where in R are there velocity units? And it's only in the derived version of R do we get the velocity units, right? So when we plug in the joules in their derived version, we can get that that is actually kilograms meter squared per second squared moles Kelvin. And now you can see the kilograms per mole are going to be canceled out by molar mass. Notice molar mass has to be in the exact same units as these kilograms per mole so that they do cancel out. Kelvin is going to cancel out as well. And I have meters squared per second squared, which when you take the square root of that, you will get meters per second, which is awesome. Okay? So that's kind of the sense of what's going on in this uh, particular equation. And yes, you should definitely keep this equation handy as it's one of our major ways of talking about mathematically that lighter particles, in fact, do move faster than heavier particles do. All right, in terms of this, let's go ahead and do a problem. Let's just do one problem real quick here, right? And that one problem, we're gonna do something relatively straightforward. Maybe I'll do a second video that has some more problems. But we're gonna do a problem that has two parts because as we know, chemistry math problems like to be multi-part. We're gonna calculate the root mean square velocity for a couple of gaseous particles, right? So let's make this a moment. Calculate the root mean square velocity for, let's say, um, one of my favorite molecules, which is nitrogen, dinitrogen monoxide, otherwise known as nitrous oxide. I like it because it's laughing gas, right? And for nitrogen, which nitrogen we know naturally comes in twos. So that'll be nitrogen versus nitrous oxide. Sounds like fun. And we need a temperature here. So let's say it's at 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So that we can kind of get a sense of, hey, does this actually, does this formula actually work out for what we want it to do? Because we know that since that has an O on it, as opposed to just the two ends, this one is the heavier particle and therefore should move slower, right? So let's see the root mean square velocity for N2, right? For N2, it'd be three times 8.314 kilograms meters squared per second squared mole K, right? Really huge amount of uh, units there. And times the temperature, the temperature needs to be in Kelvin, which we know the temperature in Kelvin is the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273.15, which means it's 25 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, which gives us 298 Kelvin, right? We could put 298.15 if we wanted to, but let's not make ourselves a little happier 
by not overcomplicating things. And then we, of course, need the molar mass of N2. The molar mass of N2, we would look on the periodic table at N, look at the number underneath it, the atomic mass, and that is now what we have relabeled as the molar mass. It's 14.01, we'd multiply that by two, right? So 14.01 times two, is going to be the molar mass of N2 in grams per mole. Of course, we know, now that we've talked about this, that this needs to be in kilograms per mole. So let's do a little conversion here. We know there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. We could have done this beforehand, too. And look at this. Woohoo! Moles cancel out. Kelvin cancels out, grams cancel out, and kilograms cancel out, which leaves me meters squared per second squared that I'm going to take the square root of. All right, let's plug this in right quick using my handy dandy calculator, which is handy and dandy. Woohoo! Divided by 28.02. I got a cool number like. Oh, wow. 265264.668 is before the square root. And then I'm going to square root that sucker, which is the same thing as bringing it to the power of 1 half. Oh, and I got 515. 515. Let's see how many. Where's my original numbers? I got two significant figures here. We're going to say three is OK, although it really should be in scientific notation. Just call that good. All right, so 515 meters per second. Awesome. We need to figure out what's going on with the N2O, right? That was for N2. Let's do N2O. Let's do it up here. N2O, right? Same exact deal. 3 times 8.314 kilograms meters squared per second squared mole K. Woo. And that's kind of running off here, so let's put something underneath it. Times 298, right? And that was K. And then times, same deal here, 1,000 grams. Oh, that's running off the board here. Let me get that a little bit closer in. Times a thousand and that's going to be grams it's really running off the board sorry sorry let me move it all over a bit this happens sometimes you got to make sure you have your boundaries right right all right how's that that's a little bit better all right that doesn't really work with my k though k times moles there you go and then i have my times 298k times a thousand grams per kilogram. And I didn't write it all out pretty like I did down here. So follow this kind of idea. All right, and then we're gonna divide that by um, the molar mass of N2O, which should be 28.02, this plus 16, right? So let's do that real quick. 28.02 plus 16, because I've looked up 16 is from the periodic table underneath the oxygen, right? I'm going to add that to it. Ooh, and there you go. Let's plug that in right quick. 3 times 8.314 times 298K times 1,000 divided by 44.02. The number I got was 168. 848 before I take the square root and I'm taking that to the one half power and I got 410. Ooh, let's put that right there. The root mean square velocity of N2O is actually 411. It's close enough because it's 410.911. We'll call that 411 meters per second. So indeed everyone, this actually works out, right? The heavier particle moves slower than the lighter particle does. And we have just checked out that theory by 
doing a problem. All right, until next time, adieu.